Hi right, everyone, I finally thought of a name for this. Let's call it Blacksmithing for Beginners. Today we're making box jaw tongs to hold two by one half inch stock. You're gonna start off, or in this case, I started off with five eighths round by eight inches and five eighths round by nine inches. The longer piece is what's gonna form the box section. So we're gonna start off like always, we're gonna knock down, uh, this is gonna be our the, the top of the jaw, the non-box portion. We're gonna knock down one inch of it we're going to start to put, in, put the angles on it, bevel it, and clean it. Just uh, clean it up as we go, make it look nice. Then after that, we're going to go and we're going to set down at our 45. And we're going to start to round that out. And that'll uh, to uh, make our bolster. So this is the 9-inch piece that's going to make up the box. In this case, we're going to uh, set down 2 inches instead of 1. Uh, this is going to allow us that extra material to make the box, and you'll see what I'm going to do here. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually hitting it with the cross peen end. I'm not hitting it with the flat face because uh, I'm trying to spread out that material width-wise rather than draw it out, draw it forward. Uh, and I'm not putting any bevels on it either. And I'm making sure that it's two inches when I'm all done. I measured quick there. Set down your 45s. And then we're just going to keep going. We're going to clean up those pieces. Um, I always find, you know, clean up the work as you go, and it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. All right, so now we're just going to draw out the reins quick. Uh, you guys have seen me do this before, so I'm just going to speed through this with the power hammer. Um, I always find with box jaw tongs, actually having a little bit shorter reins are kind of better. So that's what, in this case, that's what I do. I leave the same amount of material, but I don't draw them out as much. Um, I find box jaw tongs are easier to work with when the reins are a little bit shorter. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go over, we're going to uh, knock down our bolster to clean that up there uh, so that we can get our spot for a rivet. Same thing on the two inch piece, we're just knocking down that section so that we can finish creating our bolster. So I like to, as I'm going, uh, instead of just waiting till the end, I like to try and square up my tongs. Uh, I don't think I've shown this before, but I'll, I do this periodically as I'm making them. Um, it, it, if they're square the entire time, it helps you, it helps you line it up as you're working on it. Helps, it just helps you basically gives you a better visual on it as you're working. So here's where we're going to actually make the box portion. So what I'm doing here, this is actually, I picked this up quick and dirty when I saw some of their tongs. Um, all you're doing is you're going right down the middle and you're just hot cutting. 
uh, about halfway down, so you're taking, uh, you're cutting down one inch, and you're going to spread that. Uh, if you've ever made like a grill fork or anything like that, you, you know, it's kind of the same idea. You're just you're splitting your piece of metal in two pieces, and then we're going to spread it to both sides, uh, and then we're going to curl it up around what our piece uh, of stock that we're holding, which in this case is two by a half inch. Once you have your piece cut, you just want to start to spread that open. Uh, I, I need a little more heat here, so I just, just get them started, and I put it back in the forge, bring them back over. Uh, so I'm working on both halves of the tongs at the same time. This is the other, this is the top portion of it without the box. Um, all I'm doing is scoring that so that it gets a better grip on the material. And then, you, and then I'm just punching a hole through it. So we're back to our box shop portions. Um, see, because the whole piece is hot, I'm just going back and forth, knocking it down, knocking it back a little bit, spreading those out. And then once you get it open enough, I, I start to round them up uh, to draw that material out a little bit, actually. Because I'm making this for such a large, pe large piece of stock, uh, I'm going to need a little bit more material. Uh, I kind of maxed out with these tongs, so if you, if you down the road, if you want to make a pair of box jaw tongs, for something larger than half by two, um, I would I would start with a 10 inch piece and, and knock down three inches instead of two like I did in this. Um, or you know if, if they're not super heavy duty, you can you can just uh, draw those draw those uh, those pieces out a little more. Um, that'll that'll do it too. So just cleaning up the reins quick now that I've got the majority of it done. Um, if you have sharp corners on the reins, cause I, especially because I have the flat reins, um, sharp corners they'll dig in your hand, and just, if you're doing a lot of forging in one day, it can it can uh, build up. It, it can it can just hurt, start to hurt after a while, um, especially if you're not wearing a glove. So now I'm back to the box jaw portion, um, the box portion of the box jaw tongs. I'm just going to punch the hole here, and then drift it open. So I'm stripping that eye open, um, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to put chisel marks into the into the face of the box jaw tong portion. Um, this is a step that a, might, a lot of people might might not do, uh, and you, you don't necessarily have to because you know the box portion will grab most of it. But you know I find that these little things uh, they can and there there so there are some times when you can definitely notice the difference, and it's it doesn't take long, so I, I feel it's worth it. So now I'm going to start doing the hot fit. I riveted these together. Um, this is my second time trying to make this video, and both times I've been filming it, either my, my phone has ran out of memory or something has happened that's messed up the, the recording. So uh, rather than go and refilm this whole thing three times, uh, got to, I've been pretty busy lately, so I don't as I don't have time to record it a third time. So all I'm doing. Just squaring these up, making sure they'll fit the material, hammering them over. Um, this was at the end of the end of a 14-hour day, so I was I was pretty beat by the end of the, when I was making these. So I wasn't necessarily thinking it through all the way. Um, I was trying to use the stock itself to knock the knock the pieces down, and I was having a lot of trouble with it. Uh, don't do this. Just get a get a get a chisel or something and knock it into that 90 degree. Um, that's what I wound up doing here. I came back over. I took my 90 degree chisel and I just I just bent the I just bent the sides of the box jaw that way. I just set it right over. 
knocked him in, and that was that was much easier. So I'm just finishing up the finishing up the fit and I'm cleaning them up here. Uh, again, stuff just kept going wrong. Uh, you, I missed some of it. So I missed some of the recording, but it was just me. Uh, all I was doing was just was just adjusting them and tweaking them for about another five minutes. So you didn't really miss much. That's what they look like when it's all said and done. Uh, and they they lock into it. They actually came out better than I thought. I haven't made these in a long time. Uh, and they they grip it real well. Uh, yeah, they really lock the piece in there, and I actually had to knock it out of the jaws. So those will work. They'll hold it really strong, um, and you can get a lot of work done with them. Uh, remember to uh, like, comment, share for your chance to enter these tongs. Um, follow me on Instagram at Round Lake Forge. Check out my website, Round Lake Artisans or RoundLakeArt.com. And then just for fun, uh, some people said they wanted to see some of the knives I'm working on. This one is one I've been working on for a few months now, whenever I have time. Uh, this is a Damascus knife made in three different patterns, and it's going to be a keyhole handle. Uh, so this is, this is a chef's knife style that I'm doing. I'm still cleaning it up. But you can, you can basically make out the etch. Uh, if you don't care about the knives, that's the end of the video. Um, Comment, let me know what you, what else you want me to make, what you want to see more of. Um, I'm always looking for ideas. Thanks, everybody.